Okay, go ahead and pause your screen for a couple of minutes and try to work on this question. Okay, classify each of the following changes as physical or chemical. Well, the condensation of steam is physical. Um, and again, the way to answer these questions is ask yourself, is this change reversible or irreversible? So if steam can condense and turn into liquid water, then can water turn back into a gas or back into steam? And yeah, if it evaporates or if it boils. So anytime there's a phase change from solid to liquid gas or gas to liquid to solid, those are always physical changes because they're always reversible. The burning of gasoline. That's a chemical change because once the gasoline burns, it's no longer gasoline. This is what happens in our engine, why we have to fill up our gas tanks every time we drive is because the gasoline, once it burns, it's no longer gasoline. It's been converted at that point into carbon dioxide. Um, the souring of milk, that's a chemical change, um, again, because that's irreversible. The milk will become sour, um, but the sour milk, there's nothing that I can do cooling it back down or heating it back up. There's nothing I can do to make it unsour at that point. So a chemical change has happened and the um, chemical, the compounds inside are different. They're no longer the same chemicals. Dissolving sugar in water. So this is physical because this, um, this is reversible. Anytime you dissolve something, you can take some sugar and put it in water and stir it around and it will dissolve. And if you want to get the water and the sugar back, all you have to do is evaporate the water. So the sugar, once it's inside the water, it's not, it hasn't changed. The chemical structure hasn't changed. So remember, one definition of a physical change is whether it's reversible, and another is whether the chemical compounds themselves are different. And in this case, um, the sugar and the water have not changed when you mix them together. The uh, sugar particles just become smaller is what happens when they dissolve. Um, and the melting of gold. So that's another one of those physical changes. So if um, it's a change of state, uh, solid to liquid to gas or gas to liquid to solid. If it's any of those changes, it must be physical. And when solid gold melts into liquid gold, that's a solid to a liquid. That's a physical change. All right, go ahead and pause the screen again for a couple of minutes and try to work on this one. Okay, identify the following properties as either extensive or intensive. Okay, so um, remember, extensive is when something depends on the amount of material that's present, and intensive is a property that does not depend on the amount of material. So volume, if I take two different scoops of, um, of some sand from a bucket, then the volume of those scoops is likely going to be different um, depending on how big the scoop was. If I use the same size scoop, maybe they would be similar. Um, if I take two scoops of a bucket of sand, then the temperature is probably going to be the same in both of those. It doesn't matter how big the scoop was because the sand, all the sand in the bucket, we would assume is at the same temperature. So if I take a little scoop, it has that temperature and if I take a big scoop it has that temperature. It doesn't matter what the size of the scoop I take. Um, the humidity, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about a small bit of air or a large bit of air. It might be 60% humidity inside my house and 60% humidity outside my house. Um, so the, the small room of my house or the larger space outdoors um, has the same humidity. It doesn't matter how much stuff there is. So that one's um, intensive. I realize now this says extensive. <laughs> so this should say intensive instead. Um, heat. This is a quantity that's um, uh, not probably at this point very well understood uh, at this at this level in the course. So. Heat, it, we, sometimes we get heat and temperature confused, but heat and temperature are different things. Um, temperature is what hap is the average kinetic energy of a substance. Um, 
if we take into account all of the uh, the different molecular motion inside there, it's the average. Heat is um, the amount of energy that I have per unit substance. So if I have uh, a couple of grams of a substance at a temperature versus 100 grams of a substance at that temperature, the 100 grams has more heat because it has more energy because there's a little tiny bit of energy associated with each gram. So if you have more grams, you have more energy, so you have more heat. So that's an extensive property. Um, and finally, boiling point. It doesn't matter if you're checking the boiling point of a cup of water or a pan of water. Um, the boiling point's always the same. So the boiling point is another intensive property.